another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel. In the story of Expedition to a New Moon. We find Taurus, Crystal, Scott, and Professor Mace aboard the Evening Star, discussing plans for colonizing a new moon. But Father, what's so unusual about a new moon? This moon resembles our Earth so much, we think it may have an atmosphere. And if it has an atmosphere, it can be colonized. Aye, we can use a little more productive land in this solar system. Precisely why you're going there, Taurus. We need a complete survey. Then we'll have to make a geological survey as well. Right. Your ship is outfitted with all the necessary equipment. Of course, Chris. We'll be taking the new survey ship. Scott, have you had a chance to look over the new ship since your return? Not yet, Professor. We'd better go down and check it out now. Good. It's being outfitted in tube three. The chief expects you to blast off at 6.03 a.m. Earth time. Aye, we're no sooner than get back to home base, and here we go again. Now, Taurus. Father has just explained that the target is approaching orbital position for blast off. Otherwise, we'll have to delay the project for another year. Notify the chief. We'll make the deadline, Professor. Come on, gang. Let's get going. You and Taurus tested the surveyor, didn't you, Scott? Yes, Crystal. But the instrumentation wasn't complete at the time. We still have a lot of equipment to check out. There she is. That's going to be our home for a while. How do you like the surveyor, Chris? It's a beautiful ship. And it's probably the most completely equipped survey ship ever built. With all the equipment necessary to do a geological survey. The control section can be ejected and act as a landing sphere. I'd feel more at home in the Star Duster. This ship is too slow. Horace, this is a survey mission, not a space race. There goes our moon mobile aboard. It's built to travel over any kind of terrain. It's going to come in real handy. Aye, Skipper. I'm glad they remembered spacemen are allergic to walking. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, gang, let's get aboard and check this baby out. It's got to be ready for blast off at 0600 in the morning. Clear the tube for a blast off.
we're coming up fast, Skipper. Yes, we're intercepting its orbit head on. Prepare to reduce speed. Aye, Skipper. DX tubes ready for firing, sir. Give us the gravity count, Chris. Point one, point two, three, four, five. Deflect two degrees out. Fire three. was much softer than I expected. I share your sentiments. Now let's roll up the moon buggy and see what the climate's like outside. What's the oxygen indicator suggest, Torres? There's an atmosphere, lad, but we can't breathe it. But if there's air... It's frozen. You see that funny-looking iceberg? There's your atmosphere. That might just explain the crazy gravity on this moon. How do you mean, Skipper? At double Earth's gravity, the air must have been pulled down and formed into these glaciers. Notice how they appear in rows? Hmm. Well, now that you mention it... Stand by. Something's pulling us over. Can't seem to move, Skipper. I feel so heavy. It's hard to breathe, Scott. We're, we're caught in one of those gravity belts. If I can activate this engine again. What's wrong, lad? I, I can't reach it. I think I can make it. is not too friendly, and I'd feel better if we had a home base to run to. Taurus, you roll out the shelter dome while I find a good spot to set her up. Okay, Skipper. We'd better hurry, Scott. We haven't much daylight left. You're right. 
Inside that creeping shadow, it's cold enough to freeze the atmosphere. Where do you want it, Skipper? Over there, Tark. Here she comes. Good catch, Skipper. Okay. Everybody stand back. Watch closely, lass, and you'll see how a king-sized igloo is hatched. That should give us ample living quarters. Now let's attach the landing sphere and set up housekeeping. Go ahead, Skipper. Everything seems to be in order. Let's see if we can pick up a surveyor. There. That should be it. Check it on the screen. Yep, that's her, all right. She's holding a stable orbit. We'll bring her down in the morning, eh, Skipper? Yes, but first we'll have to build a hard pad to land her on. Whoa. Lucky for us, we're not out there. The temperature's dropping 10 degrees a second. Look out there. Did you ever see such a sight? Aye, but we're as snug as bugs in here. And tis a beautiful sight to see. Hey! What? Scott! What's that? Those are rocks exploding from a sudden change in temperature. Suffering Jupiter. This is something we didn't plan for. Scott, we're losing air. We've been hit. Our shielding's punctured. Quick, Doris. Flip on our auxiliary compressor. Aye, Skipper. Give us the pressure reading, Chris. 8.5 pounds is dropping. Pressure suit, slot? No time. We'll never make it. Pressure is 6.3, Scott. This is it, Skipper. Now what's the reading, Chris? It's still holding at 6.3 pounds. I don't get it. Pressure at 8.5 pounds and rising. Ever hear of an old-fashioned self-sealing inner tube, Doris? Well, if that isn't the blasted, of course. This station is nothing but a flat inner tube. I'll be darned. Of course, if we'd been hit by a really large fragment, I, I wouldn't have been so confident. You dog, you could have told us. I was frantic. How about you getting your father on the televiewer, Chris? He'll want to know what we found on this moon. Yes, sir, right away. Yes, Dad. And the atmosphere is frozen in strips. Frozen atmosphere, eh? Scott, what happens when ice is heated? It melts, then turns to steam, Professor. Exactly. Now listen and listen carefully. You are going to try a little experiment. Go ahead, Professor. Basically, what we are going to attempt is utilize kinetic energy derived from the various gravity belts on your moon. This friction should generate continuous heat. But, Professor, wouldn't that create a flood condition? Possibly, if the heat generated were not hot enough. To ensure against this possibility, you are going to plant a thermonuclear activator within the depths of the moon. Wow! All clear, Scott? I've got you, Professor. We'll contact you later. Over. Good luck. Out. Well, let's get busy. Following Professor Mace's instruction, they planted the magnetic electrodes at strategic points between the gravity belts. How far from the next gravity belt, Torres? Almost there, Skipper. Okay, slow down. There it is. almost 200 of these magnetic electrodes. All right, back to the station. This next step is a doozy. I don't mind telling you, Skipper, I was scared silly when we planted that thermonuclear activator. What if it had gone off? Nothing could happen unless we trigger it. And that doesn't occur until we're a safe distance out in space. Then our job here is about finished, eh, Skipper? As soon as I check our circuits, we'll bring our ship out of orbit and blast off. 
Good. I'll prepare the landing pad while you're doing that. Good grief. Crystal? It's the surveyor. Something's wrong. Look. Why, it's being pulled out of orbit. Look, it's falling towards the twin suns. Quick, Joyce. Activate remote controls on the surveyor. Aye, Skipper. Activate it. Engines on. Facing mirror sun, Taurus. Maybe we can blast her out. Pressure up, lad. Fire when ready. Stand by. I can feel the heat from here. I'm changing the orbit path. The surveyor will circle over us now. Like orbiting the North Pole on Earth, eh, lad? In a way. All set, gang? Set. Go ahead, lad. There she is, gang. Perfect touchdown. Good work. I, for one, am sure glad to see that baby. Okay. Let's get out of here. What about the shelter, Scott? Leave it. There's no time to dismantle. Take a look back there. I lass, you wouldn't want to spend another night here, would you? Taurus, reading. She's not clear yet, Skipper. She's still struggling through the scrambled gravity belt. As soon as we're clear, we'll change all that. Clear. Flame out. It's a free fall. First, we'll activate the electrodes we planted back there. Get that, everybody. Here goes. Now, here we've got a grandstand seat. Adventure with Scott McCloud, Space Angels.